So this is another big issue with uh, the wind and sand erosion. When you talk specifically about the Sphinx enclosure, I mean, this is this is one of the big controversial, I mean, well, for here's the, the big academics. One. The face is not eroded. Exactly. And the, if it's wind and sand, that's the only thing that's is, exposed. And that's not as eroded. It's been one of my major points for a long time. It is, if, to be fair, it is it, the yarding, the, the sedimentary layers of limestone. It is a slightly harder form of limestone, but still, you're talking thousands and thousands of years where that the only thing above the sand level was basically the face. And, it's, and, and they explain all of this deep erosion on the body of the Sphinx and the Sphinx enclosure to wind and sand. But uh, yes, you would see erosion on that, but you just don't. Just in the interest, story. yeah, just in the interest of keeping this standalone, please explain to people the whole uh, deal with Dr. Robert Schock from oh, Boston yeah. University and the water erosion. You just want it for people that are like, what? The the water erosion that appears to be thousands of years of rainfall. Yeah, it's it's actually good. It's good background context because it does apply to not only the Sphinx. It's the most um, famous example, I think, uh, and well known example of. Of a of again an adjacent field of science coming in and challenging some of the doctrine that's been around Egyptology. Robert Schock, who's a who's a professor of geology at Boston University, to the Sphinx.